Oh shit. Here we go again. I honestly wasn't expecting to make another video about Mr. Beast so soon after the one that I just posted yesterday. At the time of me recording this and by the time you're going to be watching this, I just talked about Lunchly and it was Mr. Beast, KSI, and Logan Paul teaming up to make this competitor for Lunchables and I was basically just saying that it was complete dog shit and it's not a healthy alternative for kids to eat and of course Logan and KSI are, t are attacking Dan Tedian who I also mentioned in that video for giving his opinion on their decision to make this product and I don't know he's allowed to give whatever opinion that he wants but regardless of that we're talking about Mr. Beast specifically and it's the fact that just a couple of hours ago at the time of me again once again recording this there's a new lawsuit coming out towards Towards Mr. Beast and Amazon from a couple of the contestants who took part in the Mr. Beast games show for failed to pay minimum wages and overtime, failed to prevent sexual harassment, participants weren't provided the uninterrupted meal breaks and rest breaks. Several contestants ended up hospitalized, others reported suffering physical and mental complications while being subjugated to chronic mistreatment, degradation, and for the female contestants, hostile working environments. From one of the female plaintiffs, I wanted to join because I was a fan of Mr. Beast and his videos made me smile during a pandemic. I expected to be challenged, but I didn't think I would be treated like nothing, less than nothing. And as one of the women, I could say it absolutely felt like a hostile environment for us. We honestly could not have been respected less as people, much less employees if they tried. So yeah, new lawsuit against Mr. Beast LLC. And uh, Amazon, of course, because Amazon is the one who's sponsoring this whole fucking thing. And meanwhile, Mr. Beast is the one who's running the whole thing. And everyone's talking about it. You can go and see the quote retweets for yourself. But right now, I kind of just want to read a little bit of the court document made against Mr. Beast and Amazon. And it starts off with, Plaintiffs bring this action on behalf of themselves and a proposed class consisting of all individuals who were engaged as purported contestants of the Beast Games content production in blank. Defendant production companies and Amazon shamelessly exploited the labor of approximate, approximately blank people who served as contestants on the forthcoming $100 million Mr. Beast slash Amazon production Beast Games, which Amazon promotes as the world's largest live game show with the biggest single prize in the history of television and streaming. The Beast Games entertainment value arises directly from the physical and emotional labor of the contestants who complete under pressure cooker conditions for life-changing prize money with one person purportedly to win $5 million in the end. I only want to read a little bit of this court document. I don't want to read a whole a lot of it i don't want to read the entire thing i honestly think that you should just go and read it for yourself and i think someone else will probably go over the whole document as a whole anyways if you're really that interested in it i just want to go over the few points that i think are the most important mr donaldson who was publicly represented that all mr b's contestants get paid if they compete for just five minutes gushed to his fans online about the bigger than ever scale of the amazon sponsored beast games stating that the money was not a constraint and that amazon had given mr donaldson all creative control and ability to do whatever he wanted unfortunately the supposed magnanimous mr beast did not want to use the alleged unconstrained resources to provide fair wages and even bare minimum legal working conditions to the blank contestants whose labor comprised the core commercial value of beast games and said that the defendants employed superior bargaining power to coerce the contestants to sign unconscionable contracts with illegal terms and illusionary obligations and also knowingly mischaracterized the contestants blank to avoid defendants employment obligations under california law basically what that's saying is that mr beast and the defendants lied to the contestants and had them sign unknowingly a, a document saying that they were not going to do this that and the other which was probably not pay them a, a, a fair wage for the amount of work that they're putting through even though they're contestants they're still working as employees even though they're not officially working for mr beast's company so a very strange decision on that end and very weird that he has them signed as document as a whole to begin with some of the facts listed are the contestants engage in what appeared to be a thorough application and vetting process for beast games the contestants agreements to the contestants entered into the production defendants included redacted the contestants were employees under california law but defendants intentionally misclassified them to defendants economic advantage defendants wrongfully and willfully misclassified and on information and belief continuing continued to wrongfully misclassify the contestants were Redacted, although they should legally be classified as employees. The contestant agreement states on its face that the contestants redacted, but 
The arrangement was in fact an employment arrangement whereby defendants Amazon off one space and Mr. Beast were the actual employers of the contestant employees. So basically they were contestants, but they were signed. They signed a contract under California law, which un unrightfully and intentionally misclassified them as employees for their own economic advantage. The contestants were not volunteers. The contestants were promised and received compensation in exchange for their services on information and belief. Each of the defendants is a for-profit company and a business of making audiovisual programming, including the distribution on the video platform, YouTube and Amazon prime video, among other video platforms the contestants were promised and received a uh, competition in exchange for the redacted on the beast gains production additionally mr donaldson made pr public statements online that he had unconstrained control over beast games and donaldson had established a pattern of practicing of compensating everyone who competes in the mr beast competitions win or lose even if they participate in only five minutes the contestants were not working for free for the beast games for any humanitarian or any other public service or charitable uh, objective defendants hired the contestants to work as constraints on a reality competition show the cons contestants in reality were the essential labor component on the entire production their work on the show was the entertainment pr product that defendants were marketing and selling for public consumption and pro profit the contestants were told that if they accepted the opportunity to work for defendants they would have to be available for redacted and while they were working for defendants they would not be able to accept any other employment so this right here is pretty much just saying because of the fact that they signed this document and under california law they're technically employees whilst leaving that out in the contract they have to work for mr beast and actively partake in physical and manual labor even though they're not working as employees they're meant to be contestants defendants had no autonomy defendants exercised complete control Defendants exercised total control over the manner, meaning, and timing of the work performed by the contestants by controlling essentially every aspect of their lives during the production of the show. So they just had full control over everything that the defendants were supposed to do and where they were doing and when they were doing it, such as when and where. Defendants required the contestants to be physically present on specific dates and time around the clock at locations dictated, controlled, and supervised by defendants and which states and locations redacted. Defendants further required plaintiffs dictate all of their time to the production during the production access to personal belongings restricted movement no contact control over meals control over clothing they're controlling over clothing from what i hear there was a lot of like news and rumors and information regarding some people and during the mr beast games stealing like women's underwear so that definitely has something to do with it a lot of the document is kind of re redacted and blacked out for some reason i'm not really sure why control over sleeping arrangements which actually it goes into a little bit further with exposed to dangerous conditions the contestants were exposed to dangerous circumstances and conditions as a condition of their employment even without considering whatever confidential conditions existed behind closed doors whilst the beast games were being filmed the contestants were subjugated to dangerous conditions within the course of their employment as local news reported many contestants found it was the poor set conditions rather than the challenges themselves that proved to be the main difficulty the contestants were penned into enclosed spaces with redacted under conditions where they were unfed, overtired, redacted, and competing in stressful and exhausting challenges for a cash prize that could change their lives. The danger, moreover, was exacerbated by defendants' seeming f failure to conduct a background check. And I think that actually serves pretty much exactly what we had already kind of suspected, that Mr. Beast is very incompetent when it comes to background checks which we initially thought that's how it was when we learned about the information regarding the fact that there was someone on the sex offender registry working for mr beast directly as a manager but this document actually shows a tweet made by rosanna pancino saying that she had gotten five verified contestants and former mr beast employees i think as well saying that there was a guy on the men's team who was charged for 20 counts for battery kidnapping pandering uh, in parentheses pimping and robbery he pled guilty to the, the pimping charge acknowledging the significant evidence against him so for some reason someone was allowed to be on set and be an active contestant for mr beast's games even though if they had just done a simple background check they would have saw that he has a criminal record and he pled guilty to pimping out women to do sexual favors so that's already something there there's a whole bunch of inf other information regarding the fact that a lot of women were apparently sexually harassed and they go into a lot of detail regarding that i had already mentioned that from reading the tweet that was made by 
culture crave uh, where one of the plaintiffs talks about how they experienced a lot of hostility whilst they were working and being there for Mr. Beast during Mr. Beast games. Defendants failed to provide a safe and healthful place of employment to the particular and collective detriment of the female contestants who suffered sexual harassment. Production defendants also failed to provide a safe and healthful place to work in violation of labor code section 6300 bullshit bullshit production defendants created working conditions that jeopardize the safety of workers including by not providing sufficient food or drink taking away their access to redacted not having adequate medical staff on site and not providing a reasonable medical care forcing them not to sleep and forcing them to participate in games that unreasonably risk physical and mental injury production defendants additionally created a toxic and hostile work environment for, in particular, the female contestants who suffered redacted as well as sexual harassment through the production, as more fully detailed below, which was not only noticed but allowed and even redacted by the production defendants redacted, and apparently this was allowed because of marching orders from the top. Purported How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production Handbook states that it's okay for the boys to be childish, and if talent wants to draw a dick on the whiteboard in the video or do something stupid, let them really do everything you can to empower the boys when filming and help them make content, help them be idiots. A document that appears to be a Mr. Beast employee handbook written in the first person from what appears to be Mr. Donaldson's perspective titled how to, how to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production, the Mr. Beast Handbook, was published on the internet on August 13th, 2024 by YouTube creator Rosanna Panzino, who alleges that she received it and confirmed its authenticity by two Mr. Beast employees. This alleged Mr. Beast Handbook provides insight into the boys will be boys working condition that are seemingly promoted by Mr. Donaldson, which, if such Mr. Beast Handbook is indeed distributed to Mr. Beast production staff, advises employees really do everything you can to empower the boys when filming and help them make content help them be idiots emphasis added and, and if talent wants to draw a dick on the whiteboard in the video or do something stupid let them emphasis added so pretty much these last two parts of the court document pretty much explain and show and support the claims and allegations being made by dogpack 404 and rosanna pancino that there was a lot of misogyny towards the women and unfair treatment towards the women on the production sets and a lot of bias towards the male contestants during those production sets they outright say and mr beast condones this and allows this to happen but he allows the bias of the male contestants to go through anything else even regardless of the fact that they're treating their other contestants which are mostly female to be treated in the worst way possible which if true and if this is taken to court and it is obviously but if it's uh seen in the court of law that this actually did happen and the jury decides that the claims are true then this is huge right the fact that this is even happening is huge it's not surprising right it was only a matter of time when it was finally going to be taken to the court of law because apparently so much terrible shit has been happening rosanna pancino has been on top of this for like the past like two months since this whole thing started and has come out and it's insane that it's just gotten even larger and larger and then yesterday obviously with their whole lunchly thing and then the way that logan paul and ksi have been reacting to this whole thing attacking dan tdm with just giving his opinion on what he thinks on the product right he thinks that it's a terrible business venture and he doesn't agree with it and yet they're attacking him regardless releasing their own unproven information and constantly getting community noted it's insane right it's it's insane but it's also kind of hilarious admittedly so yeah it was only a matter of time before this really blew up the way that it did when this is taken to court and it goes through and if if mr beast is found guilty of all these allegations along with amazon of course because they're the ones who have been sponsoring mr beast games and have been giving them the funds to be able to do all this it's definitely going to be pretty crazy when it hits the mainstream because he already has lost a good a good amount of credibility in terms of youtube content creation when it hits the mainstream and parents hear about this i imagine that it's going to affect the sales of the mr beast feastables and the lunchly product as well you know because now that's a whole new thing and if they're working with logan paul and ksi that could potentially affect prime as well so who knows what will happen in the next 
coming months when this continues to go through and this lawsuit continues to happen, but only time will tell. Uh, but with that, I kind of want to go ahead and wrap things up here. If you like the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it if you guys would join the memberships. And with that, I would also like to thank the only member on the channel, Pedro360. He's like my number one fan. He's always trying to help me with content, with content ideas and stuff to make videos on. So I really do appreciate that. But without further ado, yeah, that's pretty much it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more. Turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Let the